In this video, I'm going to review the Panasonic EX750, the Japanese brand's highest-end LED LCD for 2017, which is just as well, considering that 2018 is just a few days away. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. 2017 has been the year of the OLED, with Panasonic putting the EZ1000 or EZ1002 OLED as its flagship TV, and there was no replacement flagship LED LCD for 2016's excellent DX900 or DX902. As a result, the highest ranking known OLED TV from Panasonic is this EX750 series in 2017, which is also marketed as the EX780 in the rest of Europe. We are reviewing the 65-inch version, model number TX65EX750B. It features a native UHD screen resolution, HLED LED lighting, the company's HDX2 processor, HDR support for HDR10, HLG and later HDR10 Plus dynamic metadata formats, and, get this, 3D support too. Yes, the Panasonic EX750 is the only 2017 television to support 3D playback. It's active shutter, but no glasses are shipped together with the TV, which shows you how serious Panasonic is about this dying format. The design of the EX750 is not as cutting-edge as similarly priced competitors. The bezel carries a very subtle brush metallic silver finish with chamfered edges and is slightly chunkier than what we are used to from recent H-lit LED LCDs. The TV is very heavy for an H-LED TV. We wonder if it's because of a new LCD shuttering system that's meant to provide more zonal control digitally to improve contrast and reduce hallowing or blooming artifacts. The shiny X-shaped stand reminds us of Samsung LED TVs from more than a few years ago, and given the 3D support on the Panasonic EX750, you might as well put on your 3D glasses and party like it's 2010. The height of the screen on the stand can be adjusted if you wish to place the display on the floor, but it's such a faff that involves placing the panel flat on a soft surface that you better make up your mind early. The connections are found on the left rear of the display. Even though there are four HDMI ports, only HDMI inputs 1 and 2 are HDMI 2.0b that support 4K HDR signals at higher frame rates and chroma. The power cable is fixed to the right side of the TV, and Panasonic also supplies plastic covers over the connection areas for better cable management and a cleaner look. The screen is a VA-type LCD panel with true RGB subpixel configuration, as you can see from this macro shot. As we found with many Panasonic LCDs in recent years including the DX902, CX802 and AX802, the specific VA LCD panel used by the company delivers deep blacks by LED LCD standards, but viewing angle is really quite narrow. Contrast and colors desaturate very quickly beyond 20 degrees of center, so you really need to set up camp directly in front of the TV for the best picture quality. Black level on a 4x4 ANSI checkerbox test pattern measure 0.037 nits once we align peak white to 120 nits, our usual darkroom target. As you can see from this thermal scan here, the Panasonic EX750 only has one strip of LED modules along the bottom border of the panel to illuminate the entire screen. However, running our zone count pattern, a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, reveal some interesting findings. There are definitely four vertical columns that can be switched off independently of each other, but Panasonic's dimming algorithm prefers to keep at least two consecutive columns gently lit at the same time to minimize hallowing or blooming artifacts. As the white box crawls vertically along the edges of the TV, I could see it flashing around 24 times, suggesting that this is Panasonic's digital LCD shuttering system at work. This doesn't mean that there's 24 times 4 equals to 96 zones on the EX750, however. In practice, 
the adaptive backlight control dimming on the TV performs more like frame dimming or global dimming rather than true local dimming. And occasionally, we could see luminance fluctuations, especially in 3D, for some reason. Still, we would always engage dimming on the Panasonic EX750 to achieve deeper blacks and reduce visible clouding. Color accuracy has always been one of the strong points of Panasonic TVs in recent years, so color me surprised when I found that the most accurate picture preset exhibited an obvious green tint out of the box, causing skin tones to look a bit sickly. Fortunately, this can be corrected by calibration. But I really do miss the more accurate color tracking and more refined controls with direct laptop interfacing on the top end DX902, EZ952 and EZ1002. Upscaling is excellent, with this SMPT RP133 test pattern in 576i appearing sharp and detailed without excessive ringing or fizziness. Motion handling is generally very good. 24 frames per second movies are presented smoothly without telecynic jitter in slow panning shots. For video-based content such as sports, you can engage intelligent frame creation to increase motion resolution from the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines to around 600 lines. And there's also backlight scanning on this TV. You can enable this by turning on clear motion. That will boost motion resolution even further to 1080 lines according to this horizontally scrolling test pattern. I found the backlight scanning on this Panasonic EX750 to be very usable with no visible increase in flicker, and whatever drop in light output can always be compensated for by increasing the backlight value. One big flaw in the motion performance of the Panasonic EX750 or EX780 in the rest of Europe is frame drops and stuttering during certain scenes, mainly in 25 frames per second content, such as movies from Freeview, Freeset, or Sky in the UK. Other Panasonic TVs with the HCX2 processor, such as the EZ952 and EZ1002 OLED, also suffer from the same problem. We first highlighted this issue in our review of the Panasonic EZ952 back in July, and demonstrated the frame drop in our annual TV shootout in August using a foggy intro of the Warner Brothers logo in a Harry Potter film recorded from Freeview. The fact that we're now almost at the end of 2017 and the problem remains unfixed suggests that there is a more deep-seated problem than purely software issue. You can engage game mode or pure direct mode to eradicate the stuttering and frame drop, but it's not a permanent solution, since game mode not only breaks 5.5 pull-down, so slow panning shots in 24 frames per second movies will look more jittery, but also it cannot be applied on tuner inputs. The Panasonic EX750 is HDR capable, but peak brightness is limited. On our calibrated 65-inch review unit, peak brightness on a 10% window measured 430 nits, increasing to 445 nits on an 18% window and 470 nits full fill, confirming our earlier zone count of four vertical columns. The bigger the area, the higher the peak brightness. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at a very healthy 97% thanks to the PFS phosphor used as captured by our spectral analyzer. That said, color saturation tracking in HDR mode on our review sample appeared noticeably undersaturated, requiring proper calibration to rectify. We played some 4K Blu-ray through a Panasonic UB900 on the EX750 and were satisfied with what we saw. Despite its limited peak brightness, the TV tone maps appropriately depending on whether the max CLL metadata is 1000 or 4000 nits, so specular highlights are not blown out and there's decent HDR effect. In terms of posterization suppression, judging from the sky in the Martian, the Panasonic EX750 is not as clean as the Sony's which feature 14-bit super bit mapping technology, but is smoother than the Samsung's. We also checked out Blue Planet 2 in UHD HLG HDR through BBC iPlayer on the Panasonic EX750 and found a bug. If you access the BBC iPlayer app through the home screen, then the picture is for some reason locked to dynamic mode with an overly cool color temperature and forced interpolation, 
leading to some opera effect and interpolation artifacts. As you can see, the picture remained the same, even as I changed the picture presets. However, if you access VBC iPlayer through Freeview Play, you'll need to manually search for Blue Planet 2 in UHD, so it's a royal pain, but it'll be worth it, because then you can switch to a more accurate picture preset with correct colors and no forced motion interpolation. For playing video games, the Panasonic EX750 is a very responsive television, with game mode enabled, input lag measured 22 milliseconds either in 1080p SDR or 4K HDR modes, which will appeal to Twitch gamers looking for the lowest latency. Right, before I forget, let's talk about 3D. Yes, the Panasonic EX750 supports 3D, but it's not very good. The 3D mode is 60Hz centric, so 24Hz and 50Hz material will exhibit noticeable jarder in slow panning shots, unless you use intelligent frame creation which will introduce other side effects. Weirdly too, there's more backlight fluctuation and vertical bending in 3D mode. Personally, I don't think it's worth even spending more on 3D glasses for this TV. For the best 3D viewing experience, you still can't beat the 2016 3D-capable LG OLEDs, such as the C6, E6, and G6. Okay, let's sum up. This 65-inch model currently sells for £1,800 in the UK, which is at least £700 less expensive than the cheapest 2017 OLED TV, so its competition is mainly LED LCDs from other brands. While its video processing and SDR color accuracy are excellent after calibration, it also boasts a very low input lag of 22 milliseconds. The TV is let down by really narrow viewing angles, even by VA LCD standards, 25 frames per second frame drops and relatively low HDR peak brightness. I think the Sony XC93 and Samsung Q7F are better buys at this price point. The Sony XC93 has dual stacked LEDs, triple the peak brightness at 1300 nits, with a forthcoming Dolby Vision firmware update while the Samsung Q7F QLED can exceed 1000 nits and has wonderfully explosive colors and superior anti-reflective filter. It's fitting too that this is our last TV review of 2017, because it highlights the dilemma faced by TV manufacturers when choosing between LED LCD or OLED for their flagship models. To make an LED LCD that can even begin to compete with OLED on picture quality, you really need full array local dimming, or FALD, with a high number of independently dimmable zones, the more the merrier. But the more LEDs you put on the TV, the higher the cost, and the thicker the set. And judging from consumer trends in 2017, if they are spending above a certain amount of money, let's say £2,000, then they're much more likely to choose an OLED over an LED LCD. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if a TV brand wants to make some money selling TVs, and all of them do, there's very little incentive for them to develop and sell a full array local dimming LED LCD in this day and age. Not when they can just buy OLED panels from LG Display, not when consumers actually prefer wafer-thin OLEDs with true blacks and white viewing angles when spending a lot of money. I haven't received any advanced briefing from any manufacturers, and I don't have a crystal ball. But at CES 2018 next month, I'll be extremely surprised, pleasantly surprised, to see a direct replacement for the Sony ZD9 or Panasonic DX902 on the LED LCD front. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.